The wind howls across the empty plains, a sound so cold it cuts deeper than silence. Snow drifts pile against the horizon, swallowing the land in white. The sky turns to glass, and every breath turns to frost. Inside, modern homes' heaters roar, screens glow. But centuries ago, there was only earthwood and flame. And somehow, they were warm. No furnace, no steel, no walls of plastic. Just soil that breathed, just fire that listened, just wisdom that endured. The Great Plains froze for months, but under the snow, the Earth Lodge glowed like a heartbeat. A dome of soil and timber alive with breath and balance. So before we chase comfort through wires and power, let's step back, let's listen. Because the secret to warmth was never technology, it was understanding. The wind across the Great Plains could strip the warmth from bone. It howled without mercy, whipping through open grass across rivers sealed in ice. Out there, the cold wasn't just weather, it was a predator. Every step on the frozen ground cracked like glass. Every breath fell stolen. And yet, in this world of white silence, entire villages survived and thrived. The Mandan and Hidatsa people didn't build on top of the land, they built into it. While others stacked walls against the wind, they listened to the whisper beneath their feet. The earth itself, quiet, steady, unbroken, became their ally. They began by digging. A shallow pit maybe five or six feet deep. Not enough to vanish, but enough to disappear from the wind's bite. Down there, beneath the frost line, the ground stayed alive. Its heart beat at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. All year round, a pulse of warmth the air could never steal. They lowered their floors below the surface. The soil surrounding them wasn't just dirt, it was a blanket. Each inch of packed earth held yesterday's heat, pressed close like memory. Walls weren't built to block nature, they were shaped to join it. When the wind screamed across the plains, the lodges beneath stayed silent, still, balanced. Outside the world froze, inside breath turned to comfort not frost. No concrete, no furnace, no fear, just the earth breathing. That was their secret. The warmth was always there, hidden underfoot, waiting for those patient enough to listen. They didn't fight the cold, they befriended it. They moved not against the land, but with it. Because survival to them was never war, it was harmony. Today we dig underground bunkers with steel and panic. But they did it with reverence, with trust. Different purpose, different heart, same wisdom. And as the snow drifted higher each night, those hidden homes beneath the prairie stayed warm proof that the first furnace was the earth itself. Once the earth held them steady, the builders turned upward. The Mandan and Hidatsa tribes shaped their walls not as corners, but as circles. They understood something the wind did not straight lines break. Circles endure. The north wind roared across the plains like an endless beast. Flat roofs cracked, sharp edges caught the storm, but a dome, a dome taught the wind to dance. They chose cottonwood or willow, tough, bendable, alive. Trunks stood in a ring around the pit, angled inward, each one leaning toward the next meeting at a single point, above a crown of strength, a gathering of balance. Over that wooden skeleton, they layered grass reeds and thick sod, each layer breathing with the others, light catching moisture, earth sealing it in. The result wasn't a ceiling, it was a living skin, from the outside, it looked like a mound, quiet, humble, but inside it pulsed with air and warmth. When storms screamed across the prairie, the dome curved, flexed, and let the wind slide over like water on stone. No shatter, no break, just flow. That curve held more than structure, it held philosophy. The shape of the sky above them, the womb of the earth beneath. A form without edges, without endings. Inside that circle, warmth moved in loops, fire rising, smoke drifting air, descending a rhythm as old as breath itself. There were no cold corners, no dead air, only the round cycle of heat and life. Modern builders call it efficiency, but to them, it was respect. They didn't design against nature, they designed with her pulse. So when you picture that mound half buried in snow, 
Remember, it wasn't a hut. It was a heartbeat. A living dome of soil and soul proof that the purest shelter is the one shaped like the world itself. Balance. At the center of every earth lodge beneath the curve of its living dome, there was a fire. Not a roaring inferno. Not chaos. But a slow breathing flame, the heart of the home. It burned in the exact center right beneath the smoke hole above, perfectly aligned with the sky. Every ember, every flicker followed a rhythm older than language. It wasn't just heat, it was life itself. The problem was simple yet deadly. In a sealed space, fire devours air, smoke suffocates. But they understood what modern architects call the stack effect. Warm air rises, cold air sinks. So they built with that law, not against it. The hearth sat low under the vent at the dome's peak. The entrance tunnel dug slightly below floor level became a channel for cooler air. When the fire burned, it drew the fresh air inward, fed by the cold. Smoke rose through the vent clean and sure, while warmth stayed circling below. No choking haze, no wasted heat, just breath. Each lodge became a self-sustaining organism. It inhaled, it exhaled, it lived. When storms howled outside the hearth, whispered back a steady glow, a heartbeat in the dark. Families gathered around it. Children watched the sparks rise, tracing prayers into the smoke. Elders told stories that lasted through the night. The lodge glowed not from flame alone, but from spirit. They didn't build chimneys. They built lungs. They didn't burn to survive. They burned to belong. The fire's warmth wrapped the walls, the people, and the silence itself. It taught them patience, discipline, gratitude, to feed just enough wood to live, not to waste, to tend the flame as one tends a friend. Today, surrounded by electric heat and humming vents, we forget that fire once listened. It listened to our breath, our stories, our need for connection. And maybe that's what made it sacred. It didn't just warm their homes. It warmed their souls. Balance. There was no fiberglass, no foam, no walls packed with chemicals. And yet, their homes stayed warm through months of howling storms. How by listening closely to what the earth already knew, they learned that every element of nature carried a purpose. Grass, bark, and soil, three humble materials each, a guardian in its own way. Grass drank the moisture before it could seep inside. Bark deflected the wind bending, but never breaking. And soil, heavy patient soil, locked in the heat like a sealed jar of summer. They didn't mix these at random. Each layer was placed with care, one upon another. Grass first for softness and breath, then bark to block the gusts, then earth to anchor it all. Together they formed a shell that breathed instead of suffocating. Packed too tight and the air would die. Left too loose and the wind would invade. So they built by instinct, pressing just enough to hold, leaving just enough to breathe. From a distance, the lodge looked simple. But touch it, and you'd feel warmth humming through the wall, a faint vibration, as if the earth itself were alive inside it. Rain rolled off, wind slid by. Inside, the air stayed calm, dry, balanced, constant. It wasn't comfort made by force. It was comfort made by harmony. Each layer taught a law of physics they never wrote down, but understood by heart. They built not from blueprints, but from memory and respect. And somehow, their hands achieved what our machines still try to mimic. Today, we pay thousands for eco-insulation. We brand it, patent it, sell it back to ourselves. But they... They built it with nothing but patience and touch. No plastic, no waste, no noise. Just nature arranged in order. Just balance between breath and barrier. And perhaps that's the truest lesson hidden in those earthen walls. That warmth never came from what we added, but from how we listened. Wisdom. Inside the Earth Lodge, there were no doors, no partitions, no rooms to hide behind. Only one open space, a single circle of life revolving around the central fire. It wasn't chaos, it was rhythm. 
the sleeping platforms curved along the outer wall, slightly raised from the floor. The center remained open, reserved for work, for stories, for laughter. Every sound, every breath joined the same air. Nothing was wasted, not even warmth. In a world where cold divided people, the lodge did the opposite. It brought them close. The fire didn't just heat the space, it shaped the way they lived. No one was far from its glow, no one beyond its reach. There was no privacy in the modern sense, but there was presence, the kind that needed no words. Children fell asleep to the soft voices of their elders, mothers cooked by the same flame that dried the hunter's boots. Every ember connected them body to body, story to story. The architecture wasn't just about structure, it was about belonging. Heat moved through the room like conversation, slow, circular, steady. When someone laughed, the sound mixed with the crackle of the fire. When someone sighed, the warmth carried it away. This was their insulation, the invisible kind. Not in the walls, but between hearts. The warmth of connection stronger than any material ever built. They didn't measure comfort by space or silence. They measured it by nearness, by the hum of voices and the rhythm of shared breath. Outside the night froze solid, inside it was alive. The fire flickered across faces <laughs> and in that glow, they didn't just survive winter, they celebrated it. Today we build houses larger and colder. We heat every room separately and somehow we feel more alone. They, on the other hand, built a single room and filled it with life. Their warmth wasn't just physical, it was communal, it was human, togetherness. Every earth lodge was born from the ground, and one day it returned there. For 30, sometimes 40 winters, it stood strong, sheltering generations within its round embrace. And when its walls softened and roof sagged, there was no ruin, only renewal. They built the new beside the old, same soil, same wood, same rhythm. The beams decayed into the prairie, the sod melted into fertile ground. The earth reclaimed what was hers, and the people gave it freely. No waste, no rubble, no scars. A perfect circle life warmth return. Their homes didn't end in destruction, they ended in gratitude. That was their quiet genius, a design strong enough to stand gentle enough to surrender. No concrete, no plastic, no fear, just balance. They built not for forever, but for belonging. And in that cycle of birth and decay, they found something lasting the peace of returning home, harmony. Every curve, every pole, every doorway meant something. To the builders of the Earth Lodge architecture was never decoration, it was prayer. The circle wasn't just a shape, it was the cycle of life, birth, growth, return. The entrance always faced east to greet the first light of morning and the smoke hole above. That was not a vent, it was a window to the sky, a bridge between earth and spirit. They built not with rulers, but with reverence. Every angle aligned with meaning, every post placed with intention. The result was not a house, it was a living diagram of the universe. Inside warmth moved in circles like seasons, like time. People didn't stand apart from nature, they stood within it. The dome mirrored the heavens, the hearth mirrored the sun. To live inside an earth lodge was to live in balance with all things earth beneath fire, within sky above. Today, we build walls to separate, to protect, to isolate. They built circles to connect, to remember, to belong. Because warmth doesn't come from fire alone, it comes from meaning, respect. The wind moves again across the Dakota Plains, soft, endless, familiar. Everything has changed, but the wisdom beneath the soil still breathes. The Earth Lodge may have faded from the prairie, but its lessons remain that warmth was never born from fire alone, but from understanding. When the world burns more fuel to chase comfort, the ancients found peace in silence, listening to the ground beneath their feet, trusting it to give back what it once received. Their walls were alive, their homes were humble, yet their minds brilliant. They built not to conquer nature, but to join her. Maybe it's time we remember that. Maybe it's time we listen again, because the wind still carries their voices. 
The fire still remembers their hands, and beneath the frost their warmth endures. Silence, breath, understanding, 